Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. Those who have grown up in repressive regimes see some of the signs happening here in this country, right here in the United States of America. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Harry Mahet, senior litigation counsel for Liberty Council. And Harry's very first day of freedom was December 25, 1989, when as a 12-year-old boy, he experienced freedom for the first time in his life in communist Romania. Harry, you have told me many stories about your dad, who was a pastor, and other pastors in communist Romania that people in this country have no clue about. Your dad was a pastor, and um, one time in communist Romania, he was suspected of having Bibles smuggled to him, and some secret police came to your house. Tell us about that. That's right. You know, Bibles in Romania were the ultimate contraband. Uh, having one was a crime. Having several with intent to distribute them uh, was an even bigger crime for which some went to prison and some went to labor camps and many were killed. And so on a particular occasion, my uh, parents received a shipment of Bibles from the West, from America. Uh, they were in the Romanian language and uh, they were inside our home ready for distribution. Uh, despite our attempts at secrecy, the uh, all-knowing secret police found out that these Bibles were inside our home. And uh, before we knew it, we were awoken up one night by uh, loud knocks on the door and by German shepherds barking outside our door who had been specifically trained to sniff out not uh, dead bodies after an earthquake, but Bibles uh, from the people. And so they came in. You actually had the Bibles in your kitchen. Your dad answered the door. Your mom went in and uh, quickly decided uh, a course of action. And That's right. uh, she took a piece of plywood and stuck on top of those Bibles, threw a sheet over the top of it. It looked kind of like a makeshift, although not even, uh, table on which she actually served coffee that was also smuggled in by the same missionaries. That's right. It was a makeshift coffee table, clearly crooked, but uh, it fit right in with what the, the communists were churning out from the factories. So <laughs> it wasn't uh, uh, out of place. And uh, uh, sure enough, uh, we put on some coffee, which was a rare delicacy in Romania. We only had it because it was brought in by the same uh, uh, missionaries. And so the aroma of coffee, the hospitality that they were being greeted with, when in fact they had come there with evil intent, uh, changed the tone, changed the conversation, and uh, perhaps uh, covered up those uh, those nostrils of the, the German shepherds. Now, she served the coffee on the same table. She, in fact, did. Under which the Bibles were located. Exactly. And so they're around there sipping their coffee, having a good time. The Roma's going through the air, so the dogs are smelling that, not the Bibles. That's right. And they go away happy, but they never see the Bibles. They go away the same way that they came in, which was empty-handed. They did not discover the Bibles, and um, we were able to distribute them to people who were just hungry for God's Word. Now, when they did find Bibles, they would shred them, and they would make toilet paper out of the shreddings. Yeah, they wouldn't even burn them. They would turn them into toilet paper as sort of the ultimate insult to uh, the Word of God. But people actually uh, were so hungry for God's word that sometimes when you're shredding things, you know, you'll still have a, a sentence depending upon how the shredder goes. And they would actually be able to read certain uh, verses uh, on the toilet paper? Yeah, actually, you know, the communists weren't good at anything. And uh, they weren't good at coffee tables. They were not good at making toilet paper. And uh, in the processing that they did, oftentimes you'd have uh, rolls of toilet paper with uh, God's word uh, right on them. Well, one day, though, a pastor was arrested just like they had been arrested uh, in many previous occasions. They went off script or for whatever reason, and this pastor was arrested. But in your town, the people of that church decided to pray outside this pastor's house. Nightfall came. They continued to pray. More people began to join them. And before you know it, uh, many citizens of your city, of about 400,000 or so, I believe, 
began to join and pray for what was taking place. That's right. It was just before Christmas in 1989, and it was something that had happened routinely many times up until that point. A pastor preaches the Word of God in a church only to be met by the secret police at the end of the service and to be taken uh, to jail. It happened on this one particular occasion. People didn't go home this time, though. They sat there. They demanded freedom first for this pastor, but then subsequently for themselves and for all of the Romanian people. And uh, a couple of days before Christmas in 1989, a town of 400,000 Romanians demanding freedom for themselves. Up until that point, even the very mention of that word would have caused them to be taken to jail or to a labor camp. And now you have an entire city in unison demanding libertate, which is the Romanian word for freedom. Liberty, uh, yeah. for freedom. And they're asking for God. We need God. Uh, that's right. You know, the, the communists had, uh, had tried their best to just wipe out even the memory of God from uh, uh, the, the minds of the people. And yet on that day, people were praying the Lord's Prayer and they were singing Amazing Grace and they were demanding the return of, uh, of uh, God and of, of morals to Romanian society. So Ceausescu gets nervous. He sends his troops in. They begin firing. But uh, that doesn't uh, stop it because there's another place in Romania that people gather and they start doing the same thing. So he calls then a meeting of people in the capital to try to suppress it, come down hard on them kind of like I guess Morsi did in Egypt, and it backfired on him. The people did, did the same thing. Sure. He, he decided somehow that having a gathering of uh, 200,000 people or uh, even 500,000 people in, in Bucharest, the capital, was a good idea when all of this unrest was happening and when other Romanians were being killed uh, elsewhere around the country, and it, it backfired completely. So they captured him. They deposed him. They tried him. They uh, convicted him, and they executed him all within a period of 24 hours. And December 25, 1989, Christmas Day, you and all the other Romanians experienced liberty for the very first time, and all of it began a week before. That's right. When some people be decided enough's enough, this pastor and other pastors that have been arrested too many times, they're not going to go home. They're going to pray, and they prayed, and they prayed, and more people came up, and more people prayed. And that revolution took one week from beginning to end. That's right, and the church was instrumental in that revolution. The, the, the pastors were instrumental in fanning the flames of liberty, uh, not unlike uh, um, the way it happened in our own country here in the United States. And you came to the America in uh, the next year, 1990, with your dad, and your, your dad's still uh, here in America, and he's a pastor. There's a lot of Romanian pastors around the country. Um, but now you're here in America. You came here to the land of the free, the home of the brave, where churches, people gather in churches. This is what you saw from Romania. Amazing that there's a place like this. And now you're here. And uh, you're working with Liberty Council. You were in a large firm, and God laid on your heart to, to do something to help the religious liberty in this country. What do you see happening here in this country? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Reagan famously talked about America being the shining city on a hill, and that wasn't just rhetoric for us in, in Romania. When we were being subjugated by the communists, we always hung on to the hope of liberty by looking at America and the promise of, of freedom and liberty that America was for all, all of the nations on earth. So uh, coming to this country uh, uh, in 1990, uh, just even in, in the 25 years since then, uh, I've seen a remarkable change in, in this country. And I see slowly but steadily some of the same things that we were dealing with in Romania come to pass here. You remember the Santa Rosa case that we yeah. were involved in a couple of years ago. Charged with criminal contempt because they had a short blessing over a meal. Yeah, high school uh, uh, principals a whisker away from going to jail. For praying. For, for doing nothing more than saying a A Romanian pastor that you defended out west um, yeah. whose father still had the scars on his back from Romania, from the, uh, not, from the uh, communist, he's arrested for preaching out in front of a facility, a bar, or a nightclub. And uh, you go over there and, and you ultimately successfully defend him. But here he is in America now. He's preaching the gospel. He gets arrested for it. That's right. And when we tell these stories now to my family, that uh, a large number of my family is still in Romania. And when I tell them some of the cases that uh, we're working on at Liberty Council, they, they can't believe it. Uh, uh, they don't want to believe that these sorts of battles are now taking place in what has always been the land of the free. You know, I hear the same thing from people who came from communist Cuba and escaped uh, in that particular situation. And mm -hmm. you talk to anybody like Harry and other people like from Cuba and others that have come from these uh, repressive communist regimes, 
and they begin to see an eerie type of uh, progression of America going down that path. Well, we want to make sure that uh, during our watch, uh, we're going to do everything possible to stand for liberty and life. That's Go right. to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. I encourage you to order the book by David Barton, Original Intent, and many other resources that we have available. We have the entire Patriots Handbook series published by our own New Revolution Publishers, which is a, a branch uh, publishing arm of Liberty Council and Liberty Council Action. You can go there to get more resources, but make sure that you stand with Liberty Council in regular support and prayer because together we can make a difference. We're either going to hang together or we're all going to hang separately. This is a time where God could move things and turn things around just like he did in one week in communist Romania, and he can do it again in America. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.